Amen. It's so good to be with you guys tonight for our Wednesday night service. I don't want to uh, spend any more time uh, outside of the Word of God, so we're going to jump right into the Scripture. If you can open up your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. As you're turning there, uh, why don't you go ahead and keep a finger in the Old Testament as we're going to be going to Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. This is Paul speaking, writing to his son in the gospel, Timothy. And he's saying, only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me and the ministry. He's useful to me in the ministry. Genesis chapter 41, Genesis chapter 41, verse 50 through 52. Genesis chapter 41, verse 50 through 52. The scripture says, and unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar's priest of Ober, unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. Everybody say Manasseh. Joseph called the firstborn Manasseh. For God said, he hath made me to forget all my toils in, uh, in all my father's house. Verse 52 says this, and the name of the second called, called he Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. For God has called me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. I want to preach to you or teach on the subject of before and after the famine, before and after the famine, right where you are in your living room, in your car, whatever uh, the area that you might be in tonight. I just want you to close your eyes, lift your hands, and why don't we pray for a moment and invite the presence of God to begin to speak to us. I believe that God wants to give us a direct word from his presence, from his throne. So let's just begin to pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for your people, and I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that you've orchestrated everything, God, for a divine purpose. That, Father, when kingdom of, of heaven and earth meets, God, there's an alignment that uh, that is flowed out of that. That, God, that your agenda is perpetrated, God, and it's propagated, God. And we, we thank you, God, that you're going to do exactly what you want to do, God, according to your will, according to your presence, according to your timing, and according to your word, God. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Right, Rio, why don't you just say uh, to somebody next to you, if there is someone, tell them it's good to see them for your Wednesday night service. It's good to see them for your Wednesday night service service. Paul in the book of Acts is attempting to fulfill the mission that was established on his life. Paul was extracted from a religious, uh, a religious entity and he was thrusted into a kingdom culture. And Paul being removed from his uh, prior upbringing and other things that uh, define his background is now placed in uh, the kingdom of God and not just placed at any place, but he strategically placed. God has now formed him and shaped him out of uh, the wilderness of Arabia and has brought him into light, and he's taking a prominent place in the church. And in Acts chapter 15, the Bible begins to record that Paul and Barnabas are now preaching the gospel. They're attempting to fulfill the mission of Jesus Christ. And the scripture would say that in verse 36 of Acts chapter 15, it says, Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us now go and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with him John called Mark. And so as the scripture continues, verse 38 says this, but Paul insisted that they should not take with them, uh, uh, that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in uh, Pamphylia. And what you see here is the New King James renders the word departed, but other translations would render the word deserted. That John Mark, this man called John, who was surnamed Mark, has now, uh, he's been placed under the leadership of uh, Paul and Barnabas. And as Paul and Barnabas are attempting to make their way to uh, fulfill the mission of the church, and they're going from city to city, Barnabas tells Paul, well, I want to take John. I want to take John, the one who's called Mark. I want to take him with us. And Paul begins to look at Barnabas, and he says, John uh, or Mark can't come with us. And his reason 
being why Mark could not attend them on their missionary journey was because there was a time and place where Paul felt that he needed Mark, where Paul felt that he needed John. And when John or Mark was needed, when Mark was called upon, when Mark was uh, at the time where Paul was more most desperate for his attention and what Mark had to offer, uh, Mark was nowhere to be found. And Paul says, because he's deserted me, I don't want him to attend this trip with me. Because he's deserted me, I don't, I don't want to deal with Mark anymore. I want Mark to be removed from our setting. I don't want him to go forward with where I am. And now we see that Paul and Barnabas kind of get into a little schism because Paul says, I want to do away with that that has rejected me. I don't want to deal with the person that inflicted distress on me. I don't want to deal with that thing that made uh, that departed from me when I needed him the most. And so here, Paul is, and Paul's saying, I, 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 I want to leave Mark where he's at because he can't be profitable for the ministry that me and you have to take place in. And as I'm reading this scripture, I want to present to you this fact that there are some times that we can go through the seasons of life and we can forget that it is the things that we despise the most. It is the things that we reject the most. Uh, it is rejection in itself that actually bring us to a place where we can be profitable for the ministry. Paul says to Barnabas, he says, listen, I don't want Mark to come with me because when I needed him, he rejected me. But what Paul did not understand, it was in the rejection that Paul actually grew. It was when Paul Paul was in distress that Paul actually grew. And had it not been for Mark's rejection, Paul would have never learned to value God's presence the way that he did. I, I, I'm called to reflect on Genesis chapter 41. In Genesis chapter 41, we see the story of Joseph. And the outline of Joseph's story is this, is that Joseph is removed from his family. And as Joseph is removed from his family, Joseph is brought into Egypt. And we all know the story that after some time goes, Joseph is uh, no longer uh, at a place where he's just a slave or he's just a serpent or he's just a keeper of the prison. But now he's been made to be second in command of all the land. And when he's presented before Pharaoh, Pharaoh decides that he would give uh, Joseph a place of prominence. He would give Joseph a position. And as Joseph is placed there, Joseph would find a wife. And it wouldn't be just a few short years that as Joseph is going through the process of leading the children or the people of Israel, of, of Egypt, uh, in, a, uh, in their a time of prosperity, as they would transition from prosperity to famine, that Joseph uh, begins to bear forth children. And the Bible says that Joseph has two children, two children in particular. The first child that Joseph has is Manasseh. And the second child that Joseph has is Ephraim. Joseph bear forth two sons. This happens before the famine. Joseph bears forth Manasseh. And he says that he calls Manasseh by that name because for God has helped me to forget all my toils and all of my father's house. And then after that, just shortly after having Manasseh, Joseph now has Ephraim. And he calls Ephraim Ephraim because he says, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Joseph is now at a place where he's been brought out of slavery. He's been brought out of uh, the, the prison. He's been brought out of Potiphar's house. And now he's been brought into a place of prominence. And when Joseph is here and Joseph has his first two sons, the first name that he gives his son is that he calls his son Manasseh. He says, God has helped me forget the toil that I went through. And he's calls me to forget my father's house. Joseph says, before I'm ever fruitful with Ephraim, I have to learn how to go through the process of bearing forth Manasseh. He bear forth Manasseh because Manasseh says, I've forgotten my toil. Can I tell you, before we ever learn to be fruitful, we sometimes have to learn 
to forget. In the process of forgetting, the Lord can reprogram our mind. I want to help you today that God can sometimes restrict us from Ephraim until we're willing to deal with Manasseh. Joseph had to say, I had to forget the time I was in the pit. I had to forget the time that I was a slave. I had to forget the time my brothers rejected me. I had to forget the time where I longed the comfort and the affection from my father, but never had it. I had to forget the time where I wanted the love of my brother, but they gave me opposition. And it was then when Joseph received and he embraced Manasseh, he embraced the forgetting. Can I tell you that Joseph did not only need to forgive, but he had to forget. God had to reprogram how Joseph thought because as long as Joseph was willing to reminisce and was willing to contemplate what he did not have and what he had to go through, Joseph can never be fulfilled by walking with Ephraim. And Ephraim simply means the Lord has called me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Joseph had to understand this. As long as I was stuck in my father's house, I could not be fruitful. As long as I was in a place of comfort, I could not be fruitful. As long as I was in a place of prosperity, I could not be fruitful. But it was when the Lord removed me from my father's house. It was when the Lord took me out of what was comfortable. It was when the Lord dispersed me, so to speak. And the Lord established me in Ephraim. The Lord established me in the land of my affliction. When God brought me into Egypt, it was then I learned how to be fruitful. We see here that Joseph, Joseph begins to elaborate on the mindset that he's having to take on because no longer could Joseph be concerned about where he came from but he had to understand that God can show me how to be fruitful in the land of my affliction that sometimes the place where God provides and when God begins to speak and when God begins to move is not when I'm in my father's house he said I had to forget my father's house I had to forget a another source of substance and embrace affliction because when I embraced affliction it was only then that I could be fruitful. Joseph had to realize that it was when I began to forget my father's house. It was when I began to forget the place where natural uh, substance would come from and where I would be naturally sustained. It was only then that I could actually learn to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. I, I believe that Joseph and Paul are going through two similar things because Paul, Paul was not, uh, Paul was not willing to embrace Mark for what Mark truly was to him. And in the same scenario, Joseph, Joseph was not willing to embrace at first what his brothers had did to him because both Paul and Joseph experienced rejection from those they felt that should have never rejected them. They experienced desolation in places they should have never been desolate and there Joseph and Paul are there and they're beginning to acknowledge at some point in time that actually what was desolate and what was rejecting them and what was hurting them what Joseph would call affliction it was the affliction that allowed him to grow and here we see in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 11 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 11 Paul begins to tell Timothy, he begins to tell Timothy, he says, listen, I want you to understand that everybody else has left me, but Luke is here. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to go get Mark and bring him with you, for he is profitable for me and the ministry. He says, I don't want you to leave Mark where he's at. I need you to go find rejection. I need you to go find hurt. I need you to go find pain. I need you to go find that thing that I ran from. I need you to go find failure. I need you to go find distress and bring that with you because I've learned as I've grown in Christ that it wasn't everyone that was on my side that helped me to grow. But it was actually the affliction that gave me room to bear forth to the promise. And he says, go get Mark. Go get the one that rejected me. 
Go get the one that hurt me. Go get the one that turned its back on me. Go get the memory of pain and hurt and bring that with you. Because what I've learned is this, is that if you'll bring forth Mark, he's profitable for me and the ministry. He says that there's something that's produced in me that I could not produce on my own, but I'm able to produce when Mark's around. There's something that failure was able to produce in me that I could not produce on my own, but I was able to produce when failure was around. And Joseph and Paul are coupling their affliction. They couple their pain and they begin to acknowledge the point that when Mark was around, when pain was around, when Ephraim established the point, that I was fruitful not in my father's house but I was fruitful in the land of my affliction Paul says no 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 the same person that rejected me the same person that said I couldn't do it the same person I've been running from it could be my fears or my failure go get that exact thing because that thing is profitable for me and the ministry he said, I gained, I, I had profit, I, I was able to make something out of myself. I was able to get profit. I was able to extract what I could not extract before when I finally realized that Mark was not a hindrance, but Mark was the exact thing that thrusted me forward. Can I tell you that both Paul and Joseph understood this, that before and after the famine, the difference that was greatest seen in anything that happened was not a difference in their brothers, was not a difference in their context, but it was a difference in who they were because it was in the affliction that God changed them. It was in the rejection that God could adjust them. Paul understood. He said, listen, I, I, I didn't have it all together. I want you to watch what he says. He says, Luke is with me. Luke is the physician. Luke is the comforter. Luke is the one that's been faithful. But he said, Mark was able to produce Produce some things that Luke could never produce. Faithful friends could not produce what the bitterness of a bad experience was able to produce. And Paul says, I learned God let me stick with Luke long enough for me to realize that it was not only when I was in my father's house he can cause me to grow. But he said, send for Mark. Don't send for the one that was always there. But send for the failure. Don't send for the thing that I was always comfortable in. But send for the destruction. Stress. Don't send for times that were good, but send for affliction because it was in that moment that I learned what Luke could not produce. Mark could. There, there, Paul. Paul says, Luke, Luke has been with me. Luke has been faithful. Luke's been a good friend, and I'm thankful for Luke. I'm glad for Luke. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't thank God enough that he allowed Luke to stay here. But, but, but I've also understood this, that if it's not for Mark, if it had not been for Mark, I wouldn't understand what God could actually change in me. It took me to enable myself to get connected with rejection for me to realize that God can still produce something in me that God can still make me profitable can I tell you in times like these it could be very easy for us to say well I can't wait for us to get on the other side I can't wait for us to get on the other side and I'm thankful that there's an other side to look forward to but I want to remind you what Paul and Joseph had to understand both Ephraim and Mark helped them to recollect the fact that although Luke represented good times Luke was the one that could heal and that could comfort but it wasn't Luke that helped me to become profitable. What made me profitable? What made me useful? What made me something that could be a hand for the kingdom of heaven was the fact that I experienced Mark and still held on to him. It was the reality that Mark could produce something in me that Luke could never produce. Can I tell you this? That it is the will of God that we're not only learning to be profitable in the house of God. Joseph said God had caused me to forget my father's house. Can I tell you what this building represents? This is your father's house. This is the place that's comfortable. This is the place that we enjoy. But Joseph said there was a season that I entered into where God caused me 
to forget my father's house. It's not that he didn't love his father. It's not that he abandoned his family, but he had to realize uh, as long as I was stuck where I was comfortable, as long as I remained with what was easy, I could never grow. So God had to transition me into a place of affliction. God had to transition me into a place of hurt. And he said, when that happened, I realized I could be fruitful where I could not be fruitful before. Because as long as you're in your father's house, you can depend on someone else. But if you ever enter into a state, if you ever enter into a season where you're not depending on your job and you're not depending on the church and you're not depending on your brothers and sisters, but it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer something begins to happen in you and you begin to realize that it's in my affliction that I grow. It's when I can't depend on the job I see Jehovah Jireh. It's when I don't have my brothers and sisters that he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. It's when I have a Manasseh experience. It's when I realize Mark might have hurt me but the hurt made room for the healing that was needed in me. It's when I begin to acknowledge the fact that what was hurtful and what was painful was necessary was necessary there 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 Joseph Joseph and Paul begin to realize that it was not comfort that brought them into promise but it was affliction that brought them into promise and when when God allows Joseph to bear forth Manasseh and Ephraim to follow. There comes a point in time where his family is gathered back to him. I want you to watch what happens. That after Joseph forgot his father's house, he was actually reconciled with his father's house. Could it be that God had to remove him from his father's house So that he would stop being dependent on what was not necessary, but just an accessory. Can I help you? That it was the will of God for him to remove him from his father's house. Because I believe in the mind of Joseph when he began to dream of sheaves falling and stars bowing. He thought that, of course, it would be my daddy who gave me the coat that would bring this to pass. And God said, I need to remove what you thought would sustain you so you could realize it's actually just me. And when he was no longer dependent upon his father's house, God connected him to his family. And I tell you that sometimes we can become so comfortable with the job. And we can become so comfortable with the community of believers. We can become so comfortable with those things and blessings that God has given us. that We begin to think that without them, God can't fulfill his purpose. But there are moments that God will remove you from your father's house. So you can begin to forget the pain and the hurt that was associated with it. Yes, but also you can begin to forget the fact uh, that, 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 that it, it wasn't comfortable there. That I had brothers that, that, that they, weren't, they, weren't, they weren't always kind to me there. But I believe in Joseph forgetting, it also helped him to remember that as he forgot the pain, as he forgot the toil, he also remembered the comfort that came from his brothers. He also remembered the love that came from his father. He also remembered the affection that came from his mother. That as he forgot, he also remembered. Can I tell you that there's ever been a time where I've been so thankful for the church of God and, and I don't remember those small little things that maybe used to get on my nerves or maybe used to bother me. You walk in and maybe someone's sitting on your seat and you were so frustrated. The person that you had issues with before. There are in times like this that God can cause us to forget the toil, but help us to remember the triumph that we share with each other. I'm going to come to a close, but I feel, it ne- I feel it's necessary for me to stop here. And the reason is this. It's because we need to understand what God prioritizes. That although the Lord allowed this moment with Ephraim, and Manasseh to happen. That although it was Manasseh that would be born first, 
it was Ephraim who got the blessing. Manasseh was born first, but God prioritized Ephraim. What am I saying? I'm attempting to say this, that God places greater priority on what helped you to become fruitful than the things that hurt you that you need to forget. And I would suggest to you if that God put the blessing on Ephraim and not Manasseh, maybe we need to shift our focus from Manasseh and slip it onto Ephraim and no longer remember uh, or, or no longer focus on what we have to forget, but focus on what we can remember that the Lord has caused us to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Right where you're at, I just want us to pray. I want you to begin to ask God, God, what exactly am I running from that you're trying to use to grow me? What exactly am I hiding from that you're trying to use to help me, to heal me? What exactly am I trying to get away from? What's, what's the mark in my, life, in my life that I despise? What's the Luke that I'm trying to stay close to, but the mark I'm trying to push away? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that your will is perfect, your timing is perfect, that you've never failed, you've never made a mistake, because you're consistent, God. In 2020, Father, we, we expect nothing different. God, I'm asking God right now, God, in a time where, when we're separated from our Father's house, that you would begin to adjust our thinking, that you would begin to adjust our mindsets, Father, that you would bring us back into a place of focus where we would realize, God, that it's the exact same things we've been running from you're trying to use to help grow us. I pray, Father, God, that you would use this time to purge us, to cleanse us, to clean us, oh God. That we would embrace Mark even though it hurt. It wasn't comfortable, but it grew me. It wasn't fair, but you used it for your glory, oh God. Father, I'm asking it right now in the name of Jesus, God, that in this time, God, where everything seems to be unstable, that we would realize, God, that you've taken us away from our Father's house so that we can learn to be fruitful in the land of affliction. I thank you, God, that when we can't get a source of substance from where we used to get it, God, that you're still the man of heaven. I ask that you would provide. I ask that you would sustain. God, I thank you for keeping your children and growing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.